the Roman Empire. Or is that a hint? 27 BC. 27 BC. 49 BC. Tell me what to shut up, but uh, I got a clue. This Roman history is divided into uh, three periods. Uh, the uh, monarchy, which is mostly a legendary mythical period, the Republic, and the Empire. Yeah, you were right. The Empire started in 27 uh, BC. The actual date was. Uh, <laughs> Everybody had a 
one or two coins at least. So everybody can see the portraits of the uh, emperors and the imperial family. There's a lot of things on coins. Now how are coins collected? Well you got portraits and you got denominations. Let me go into the let me go into the denominations of Roman coins. The basic now I, I collect silver, so that's what I have mainly. It's Roman silver coins. And the uh, basic denomination was the denarius. Now these, this uh, denarius at this time was about a day's wages for a soldier or a common worker. Now precious metal was worth more in that in those days than it, than it is traditionally during the 18th and 19th century. Another denomination that was mentioned in the eastern half of the Roman Empire was a large silver coin. And uh, this was equal to about four denarii, three to four denarii. What was the name of that one? Huh? What, what, what is that, the name of that one? A slater? <laughs> uh, Sopophilus. Sopophilus was the name of this. And another one printed in the East, but about the same value, but it was a more or less a Greek type one, had a Greek inscription. Now, these didn't have the Roman Empire, the language, official language was Greek, and uh, most descriptions were Greek. And uh, it's called a tetradram or a four drachma coin. A drachma is about equal to a Roman denarius, and uh, this would be equal to four Roman denarii. And uh, what's also very popular is the uh, large bronze coins. Romans issued very uh, large bronze coins. They're about, they range in the size between 38 to 35, I mean, 28 to 35 uh, millimeter in diameter. And they, they most of them weigh over 30, uh, 30 grams. Actually, here, here, this is the, this is the special here. This one weighs uh, 23.4 grams. Okay. In reverse, you have and for all men of the imperial family. Now, there's wives, there's sons, there's daughters. Some points have mother-in-laws on, and uh, so forth. So there's a lot of different portraits of the imperial family on the obverses. Reverses, they have a lot of different types of reverses. You've got uh, statues uh, of gods. You've got buildings which are very popular, architectural types are very popular. You've got uh, military types and uh, different kinds of buildings. Ships, ships are very uh, popular, uh, collectible on uh, Roman coins. The old galleys where you had the rows. And, uh, but there's even one series, one man collected, it had seven coins, but it was illustrations of dreams of the emperor, all the reverse. So he found seven of them. So that, that's kind of a weird type. A dream, what were dream, and then he would you know, talk about the dream he had, an aspiration, and then they would put that as the reverse type on the coin. What was that? Well, there were seven of them. Uh, Severus Alexander had th uh, three of them. Uh, Sulla had one, and uh, Antoninus Pius had one, and I think there was uh, another one too. And of course, these were all hand struck. Now, when you're striking uh, hand striking coins, you, you know you have a sort of a, a die here, and it's the outburst is standing up. It's in a vice like thing, and you have the outburst standing up. And the reverse is held by the hand, and then it's struck when it's warmed up. But then on the little coins, you don't really have to warm them up much. Some of these were, if they were in a hurry, they were probably cold struck. Now there's a lot of uh, debate about how many coins were cold struck, but how many that were added heated planchet. Now most Greek coins, most larger ones, they had heated the planchet. But there's so much dye stress on a lot of these small silver coins that many of them could have been a cold stuff. These patches were not heated. It was just by the force of the handle. Board. But when you do this, most of the uh, 
pressure is on the reverse. So reverses are being wore out of like two to one, at least maybe more. So, the, so not only were the reverses being changed whenever the emperor wanted to send out a different message, but the, the one message he had was also, uh, of course, were also being uh, changed because they had to make a new reverse dies. So there's a lot of different reverse dies and a lot of different styles. Well, one thing I want to, uh, well, my, my favorite type of uh, coin was a coin with a military reverse. Now, this is one of the Emperor Trajan. He was the Emperor from 98 to 117 uh, AD. He moved the Roman Empire to its greatest extent. He had uh, several, uh, well, he, his most successful invasion was the Dacian Wars. He had two wars in Dacia, which, which is uh, modern Romania, which he, uh, Conquered in uh, in 106 uh, AD, and they had made, made quite a deal out of it. He brought back a lot of prisoners of war. And ancient historians tell us that uh, 10,000 gladiators fought in the uh, arena for these celebrations. Most were prisoners of war. And I have uh, several of his uh, coins in 106, 107. Uh, commemorating the uh, Dacian War. One, uh, is ordinary. One has a, uh, a Roman trophy on it. The uh, Roman trophy is like a cross, and they put a helmet on the top that has shields and stuff and armor on it. And they set this up to commemorate our uh, victory. Uh, another one has a uh, Dacian captive sitting on a pile of uh, captured the Dacian arms, swords and shields and so forth. And this one, probably my favorite, which is the one I'm illustrating here, it's a Trajan in a triumphal uh, chariot uh, parading in his uh, track. And that's what's illustrated here. And a couple more Trajan I have is one where in uh, 116, 114 he annexed Arabia. By a way, they mean Jordan and the Sinai Peninsula. And it's that in uh, 114, and it has an allegorical figure of Arabia with a camel behind it, commemorating uh, that uh, annexation. And there's also one here, it has Mars advancing. Now, Mars, the god, war god, he's generally uh, illustrated with a helmet and nothing else, and carrying a spear. Which is uh, quite typical for quite typical for uh, the first retreat. Now, uh, in, in 1916, he created new provinces in uh, Western Asia: Armenia, Assyria, and Parthia. He invaded that area and conquered that. But he died in 117, while these provinces were uh, in revolt against him and his. Successor, the uh, Emperor Hadrian, on um, Sopophorus here, uh, gave up those uh, Far Eastern provinces and said there's too much for the Romans to hold on to. Uh, Hadrian had a lot of these Sopophori uh, issues because he traveled a lot. And when he traveled, they had to set up on in these uh, different uh, cities in Western Asia to pay for his travels. So these were quite common. Now this there, uh, the auction catalog said this was struck over a sarcophagus of uh, Mark Anthony. So all these cars were reused. That was very common. Without even melting them down, they just uh, strike over it. And, and, and script, uh, Roman inscriptions. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, I can't read that. But it's, they're, they're really mostly a formula. If you could read one or two, you generally get an idea of what the inscription says. Well, just uh, this Trajan had the longest inscriptions that uh, any emperor had on his coins. Well, I'll just read it out. I'll translate it into English. It just uh, I can read it because it's blowing up. Otherwise, they're hard to read. You've got to look at the glass. Well, all the death will be poor. 
you, you look at that something you say, well, is this a C or a D? Was that an A or K? But you know it's supposed to be on there. If you have any knowledge at all of inscriptions, you know what it's supposed to be. But this is Imperial Trajan Augustus Germanicus, which refers to a victory he won in uh, Germany before he became emperor. Uh, Dacia, who is the uh, conquest of Dacia, and his tribunal power, and the reverse is consul for the fifth time. Consul is like a thing as president. I'll explain that in a minute. And then there's SPQR, which means the Senate and people of Rome. <coughs> and it says the best of princes or best ruler. He was voted by the Senate as Rome's best ruler that they had. Now, uh, one thing about the emperors, they had a combination of uh, powers. They didn't move as dictators or kings, but they combined a bunch of powers together. In other words, the emperor was the command, infiltrator means that, emperor means that. He was commander in chief of the army. He was the, uh, the speaker of the house of the senate, the of the, of the, of the congress, the president of the senate, and the pope. And there was very little separation between church and state at that time. So he was actually the chief priest of the country, also. And he'd hold that uh, power for a lifetime. And the council was, during the Republic, he had uh, two rulers. He didn't want one man take it over, so he had two councils. And they were just act like the president. They moved for one year at a time, and they were voted into office. But then during the empire, the uh, emperor just took that over. Ended up a whole council. Whoever he may be chosen ever, ever would be. That, that, uh, that's a good took care of inscriptions, I think. Does anybody have any questions on anything so far? Okay. And uh, here's a, something I think is interesting. It's a book I had. Now, when I was doing books, I also sold books. I had a price list that was uh, distributed uh, internationally. Uh, yeah, this is not the last book here. And there's something in here. This is about the monuments of Imperial Rome. That's coin types. Well, I was talking about before statues of gods, goddesses. Uh, Colosseum is in here. And uh, all kinds of different things. Now, I saw this on my list. This is from uh, 98. This is my last list I've put out. And it's in here. Now, I saw. For thirty eight dollars, I was selling these. Now I looked on Amazon. It was about a year ago. I haven't checked it lately. I looked on Amazon, and this was going for nine hundred dollars. That's just thought it'd be an interesting thing. Yeah, someone would have bought it from him before he would have made a good big profit. Uh, just a few interesting. Now, this is uh, Faustina Jr. Coin of uh, She was the only person that was, she was both the uh, daughter of a Roman emperor, the wife of a Roman emperor, and the mother of a Roman emperor. If anybody remembers the uh, movie uh, Gladiator, she was the mother of Commodus. What was the name again? Uh, Faustina Jr. You know what, I'll let you have my name. Because it goes through a lot of things uh, very fast. And, uh, uh, and later, about uh, 214, 215, the Romans came out with a different silver denomination. This is, they call this the Antonionius. Uh, it's uh, meant to trap, it's a little bigger than the denarius. It's meant to trap as two denarii. But it was only worth like one and a half to million. It was a part of the Roman inflation. Ever since the empire started, Roman coins have been inflating little by little. The silver coins have been inflating. And uh, this was a big step in that inflation. It was coming up with the Antonomians. 
Well, yeah, you make a cut. What year did they start the IPO? Uh, 215. 215 AD. You want to name out for the emperor we call Call of Calif. And uh, here is something from the reign of uh, Philip the uh, First, 247 to 249. On 248, the Romans celebrated the thousand year anniversary of the city of Rome. That started way back in the uh, mythological uh, 753 back in the monarchy. So on 248, it was the thousandth anniversary. And uh, they had big celebrations. And here's the Wolf of Twins, and uh, a coin of his wife with a hippopotamus in the back. It was one of the coin, one of the animals that they uh, killed in the Colosseum to celebrate. Okay. Well, they celebrated, they had gladiators fighting and killed animals. And that's how they celebrated. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to go on this too. I don't collect these, but the late Roman coins started about 300 AD. Now the Roman coins changed completely. You had smaller bronzes and gold, silver almost went out of circulation as a circulation medium. They still had silver coins, but they would tend to be kind of hoarded. So you had bronze and gold. And uh, the gold coin was they called sodius, it was a little lighter. And that's how uh, and uh, one soldier was a uh, soldier's pay for a month. That's how you get the word soldier from the word soldier. Got a soldier, well, he was worth a soldier. He was a soldier. And uh, there were no more Greek coins. Everything was everything was in Latin. But you had 26 different men, all at the same time, but different time, different places throughout the empire. One time or another, there were 26 different men. And the flat sizes were sold out about 25 millimeters and went down to about 17 millimeters. So they got smaller and smaller and smaller as inflation uh, continued. You know, traditionally, when I was dealing with ancient coins, from the time of Constantine the Great, coins, the value, the collective value was significantly lower. Now, before that, from the of the empire until then, uh, say a coin that was worth, a gold coin was worth $3,000, from Constantine on it would be worth three hundred. Just drop to zero right off at the beginning. And of course they're worth more now than three hundred. dollars but this is way back in the early 90s. And uh, a lot of things uh, increased uh, since then. Okay, well that's, a, that's about it, I think. Oh, well, a couple more things. <laughs> okay, this, this was some information. Uh, yeah, well, I came back in the box office. Uh, this is a thing, anybody get a hold of this, the interest of Roman points. It says all the information that you would need. This is great for beginners, intermediates, and even advanced collectors could use this. There was a big introduction on what we do in the age, and there was a really good uh, catalog in here. And I've got this in here because the, uh, the binding of this is really poor. It's just kind of apart. So I just put it in uh, mine and bind it here. Uh, it's uh, the handbook of uh, Roman Imperial Coins by David Van Meter. This came out some time ago, but anybody can get a hold of this. It's probably the best, best single book you can get on. Uh, Roman main period points. And, uh, okay. and I got this off of a website, a CNT website, the coin I had an auction in recently, the one with Trajan and the Chariot. Now, uh, there's a lot of websites that sell, but I don't, I won't buy coins off eBay or nothing like that. I just get, uh, I just deal with a whole lot of established companies that have really, really regular auctions and uh, you know, been in uh, business for 50 years or so. And uh, my favorite one is uh, CNG. Uh, they, have, they have continuously run in uh, electric auctions, and they uh, also have uh, large auctions, about, uh, I think about three a year, with, with big 
Arabs. They specialized in uh, ancient and British coins. They got the headquarters in uh, near Philadelphia and one in London. And so they do a lot of British coins. But I got the cng.com, cngcoins.com. If anyone wants to look that up on computer, they have the best website that I've found. Some websites are really poor. I've, I've been on websites where I look at the R first, and then with the reverse, you've got to go to another page. So some are really poor. But this is the best commercial website that I've seen for Benin. And it gives you, you know, overall view of this. It has all the information on going to find an improvement camera. And I've got these two up here, advertisers for them. If anybody interested, I've got these up here. If anybody wants them, you know, we'll just have them. Copy of that. Okay, I guess uh, I'll talk that stuff out.